Just a quick one. Uh, do patients on testosterone replacement therapy need to worry about their hematocrit? <sighs> yes, that's the short answer. Um, essentially, the spike in free testosterone causes the kidneys to release erythropoietin, which subsequently causes the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Now, there are some people who say that the, the reason why we don't need to worry about erythrocytosis uh, is because it's not the same as polycythemia. Oh, well, yeah, well done, well done, Einstein. However, that's not the reason why you don't need to worry about it. Uh, God only knows. Um, so essentially, if you are producing too many red blood cells, then that increases the viscosity of the blood. And so the heart has to work harder to pump oxygenated blood to the tissues where it is utilized. So there's more pressure. So the actual real concern actually comes from having an elevated blood pressure as a consequence of the viscosity of the blood. So it's both for the viscosity and the subsequent raise in blood pressure and cardiac demand or cardiac output. So there was an example as in why do you not need to worry about it? Because obviously when you when you go to a high, an area of high altitude, your hematocrit rises. Now it rises because of the atmospheric pressure. So you have to have a subsequent physiological adaptation to compensate for the atmospheric pressure. Hence your hematocrit rises. Now, does your hematocrit continue to rise because you move to an area of high altitude? No, because there are compensatory mechanisms that prevent your hematocrit from rising too much. So, the advice, you do not need to worry about hematocrit on testosterone replacement therapy is incorrect. When should you worry? Well, anecdotally, guys tend to feel better with a hematocrit of less than 0.5 or 50%. Do you need to worry about a hematocrit above 0.5, say 0.51? No. Uh, you need to worry when you have symptoms and signs of raised hematocrit and they tend to really occur above 0.53. So what should you do if you have a raised hematocrit? Well, number one, you should stay well hydrated. Now, obviously, if you've got red blood cells in a limited volume, how do you dilute that? Well, you make sure that you're here hydrated. Now, you can't be overly hydrated because obviously your kidneys are going to have to pee it out. So you don't want to be kind of being stupid and drinking six litres a day. You just want to stay hydrated. So a wonderful way of knowing how hydrated you are is looking at the colour of your wee. So it should be quite clear, obviously. Um, it's it's not, the, not a wonderful way, but it is, it is, it is a way of looking at it. Um, you should obviously keep an eye on your blood pressure. So um, if your blood pressure is rising above baseline because of a raising hematocrit, that is something to be concerned about uh, something to approach your doctor about uh, because you may need antihypertensives to lower that blood pressure. But obviously the definitive answer is donating blood. So if you reduce your circulating volume of red blood cells, you have a subsequent reduction in hematocrit, which is essentially the concentration of red blood cells within the circulating blood volume. Another thing, you can take a baby aspirin, help thin the blood down. A lot of evidence suggests having taking a baby aspirin anyway is super healthy. So that is something to consider. The, the important note on that uh, issue is 
if you are subsequently going to donate, obviously it decreases uh, your coagulation. So you are, have a propensity to bleed on aspirin. Is that a big deal on 75 milligrams? No, not really. Um, however, um, if you are going to donate blood, then that is an issue because uh, there is an association between aspirin and something called Ray syndrome, which is a condition that affects children. So you must not donate blood when you are taking aspirin because that blood may be used on a child. And if you subsequently give that child Ray syndrome, then you're a very, very bad person. And that's very unethical. So the definitive answer is to donate blood. But you must also stay hydrated, keep an eye on your blood pressure, and you can potentially treat that blood pressure with antihypertensive if necessary. I was going to say something else. What else was I going to say? Um, yeah, the reason why it tends to be elevated on testosterone replacement therapy is because your body or your kidneys do not know you're about to inject testosterone. So it tends to be within the first 12 months of treatment whilst your levels are becoming stabilised. It continues to be a problem if you're incorrectly prescribed testosterone. So if you have big peaks and troughs, so your free testosterone goes up and down, up and down, um, your body will react accordingly. It does not, so say you're on a crappy protocol. Um, you know what I'm gonna say next, but I won't, I won't say it. Um, so you're, you say your in injection frequencies are too wide apart for you to, uh, to actually ach achieve stability where your body can make the necessary physiological adjustments, then every time you inject testosterone, your body goes, change, change, change. It doesn't know it's Saturday when you're about to inject. It just knows that you've had a spike of testosterone, which is subsequently converted to free testosterone. And it says, fine, kidneys produce erythropoietin to produce red blood cells because we need it because we've had that adaptation. We've had that spike in free testosterone. So we better act accordingly. So how do you prevent a raised hematocrit? from uh, adjusting your protocol. Microdosing. <laughs> Stable levels. Yay. So are we starting to understand your body wants stable levels? What's the best way of achieving stable levels? Microdosing. It's not rocket science.